No, all right. Then we had uh, Walk My Shoes Incorporated, uh, Send Fanny Jean Baptiste. They were not a grantee last year. They asked for 19,550. Staff recommended zero. Anyone speaking to that group? All right, no one. Then the last entry is well, someone. Okay. Yeah, sorry, you know, jump up fast because <laughs> it's a lot going to be a long night here. Sorry. Introduce yourself, state your name and address. Hello, my name is Stephanie Jean-Baptiste, and the address is 16220 Northwest um, 2nd Avenue, Miami, Florida. And um, yeah. so I'll quickly just talk about what my shoes, what we do, and hopefully give you guys an, a better idea of um, our role in the community. So the organization is fairly young, and so is our staff, um, intentionally so, because we understand the power the youth has in youth development. So um, the program will focus on students from underprivileged communities, and the goal is to decrease juvenile delinquency and increase um, academic achievements in those communities. So we, we are based on four core um, pillars, which are parental support, understanding the role that parents play and the development of, the, of those kids. Um, our goal is to understand their homes so we can better assist them, see what's lacking, and in what way can we make a difference. Um, the second one is pers personal development. So with that, we are intentional in partnering each one of our students with our college student as a mentor. Uh, most of our college student mentors are first generation students, so they understand the communities that those kids come from, and these students feel um, that they can relate to those college students. And uh, we have uh, career development. We have organizations and firms committing to us inviting our kids to shadow them. Um, my, the firm I work for, uh, um, for Ernst & Young, they're open to having the students come and see what accountants do for a day, for a day and other law firms and whatnot. So we want to expose these students to what's out there outside of their communities. And lastly is um, academic support. We say that on purpose because um, if you focus on the village that's raising those kids, su academic success will naturally follow, follow. So for that, we, but we, we make sure that these kids have access to tutoring. They are comfortable enough to tell us this is what we're struggling with. This is how you can reach us. A lot of times the parents don't want them staying out late, so they can't be at the library too late. So it's making that mentor accessible to them to, um, to serve them. So they, um, the mentors are obligated to meet with their mentees at least once a month. Another great reason why college students are great for that, they have the time and they, they, have, they can relate. And um, under, under um, um, career development, we have um, college prep. This, we have a summer camp going on right now. So on Friday, we're visiting University of Miami the goal is to expose these kids to as much as possible so um, so they can compete on the same level as students who are more privileged. So. All right, thank you very much. Do we have any questions for? How many, how many kids are you dealing with? So uh, in the past, we've, we've served at least 50 students. For the summer, this summer, we're, um, we're launching a year-round program and we're focusing on 10 students because we're we're promising a mentor to each one of those students. And um, our, some of our students from the past, they are now, they're, uh, they attend Florida State University, University of South Florida, and they're here volunteering with us. And some of our kids, they weren't passing the FCAT for the past, um, prior to working with us. We've, we've had mentors working with them throughout the school year, calling us, getting, getting those calls saying, I finally did it. I can't believe I, I'm, I passed. And it takes someone who understands them to get them there. Yes, you may. Okay. So, is it, pos is it possible to have the mentors meet with their mentees more than once a month? Maybe once uh, every other week or twice a month? So, with our mentors being college students, yes, they have, the, they have more time than most, but they're also defining their career. But we have several events throughout the school year. So we have events fo focusing on the parents to get that relationship going. We have um, events um, geared around personal development, um, etiquette class, different things. So th 
the obligation on the, for the one-on-one -on -one is once a month, but there are other events throughout the year where they're seeing those kids and um, tutoring goes on and the mentors are volunteering as tutors as well to be there um, when the students are going to the library. So they see them more than once. Is it also possible to um, focus on trades as well as um, matriculating on to college with the students matriculating on to college or university as we know everyone isn't built for college and it doesn't necessarily um, it's not antiquated with your level of, of, of competency or education mm -hmm. or or um, your cognitive abilities it just may be that you're really good with your hands mm -hmm. so going to trade school and acquiring a trade and owning your own business could be another uh, lucrative and um, progressive step that mm -hmm. we could kind of encourage our young people to take who may not be uh, college ready or um, college material mm -hmm. for lack of a mm -hmm. better word. So yeah. is that part of your program as well? Yes, the, the main thing we focus on is exposure. We are the products of um, expectations. Some of our students, a teacher has told them you're not going to make it we want them to know that you get to decide where you want to go. You can choose trade, you can choose college, but no one should make that choice for you and for you to feel the need to settle. So we, we, we visit um, Mammy Dade. We want them to have that exposure. They make the choice. I just don't want them to feel that that's the only thing they could do. Mm -hmm. right. Where is your so physical location? Uh, you have a post office box, but where do you like to get in? So we partner with schools. Right now the summer camp is being held at Benjamin Franklin. Um, yeah, Benjamin Franklin. K-8 Center for the summer. Okay. Um, we're um, working on a partnership with the North Miami Library. We're in communication with them and um, um, also Horacemen. Um, the, some of the administrators came and spoke to our students yesterday. Uh, the goal is to be in their schools and in their homes. So we don't, we don't meet with them in our personal location. So you would have satellite sites or as you would you have like one desert. The reason I'm asking I've seen rent and utilities three thousand. Yes. So um like at the end of the camp, we we want to celebrate to celebrate these kids. We want them to see more than just the school. Renting a space for just to honor them and um etiquette class. We need to have a space so we can as far as like eating etiquette, um just really making exposing them to more. So that those are the things that, and that's with people somewhat sponsoring us, that it costs that low throughout the school year for us to be able to host those things in their spaces that they um, provide to us. Yeah. yeah, it is very costly. All right, Greg, any other questions? Do you have awards, banquets, or any kind of celebratory uh, outside of the um, end of the year parties? Or do you I have like um, awards, banquets, or certificate ceremonies, or? We do. So at the end of the camp, we have we have that um, ending ceremony. But um, at the end of the year, we have communities, community leaders, just to, to for them to be recognized for their work. So we do have that yearly banquet. Okay. Aside from just them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. The uh, the last entity we're in dealing with here is the. Uh, YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association of South Florida Incorporated. Sue Loisel is the contact. They were not a grantee last year. They requested $20,000 this year. Staff recommended $9,900. Hi, thank you. I'm Sue Loisel, 9275 Southwest 185th Terrace in Cutler Bay, Florida. It's my home address. Um, I have um, some PowerPoints. May I? Pass them you, off and you have three minutes though to speak and so we, we need to okay I promise I wasn't Thank sure you. this is my first time presenting in a long time so I wanted to um, put it all on paper so you could see okay. everything um, the YMCA of South Florida um, has been a part of the Miami community since 1916 we've been in Miami for 101 years. Um, we currently operate in Miami-Dade, Monroe, and Broward, 
and we have been leading the nonprofit um, community for so many years, strengthening communities through youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. Our program is for 75 low to moderate income students for 180 days of after school care, K to fifth, at North Miami Elementary, Arch Creek, and Gratney Elementary. Here I have put a map of exactly where the schools are located so you can see the districts of which they fall. <laughs> the three program sites are Title I schools of which indicate 95% or greater of the students are on the free and reduced lunch program. There's a high percentage of, of extra um, assistance in reading and math needed and over 25% are two years or more below the grade level. 10 to 22% of the students exhibit early warning indicators of failure according to the school improvement plans and a high minority population is ethically and socioeconomically diverse. The after school programs make real measurable differences to um, children's and families by um, showing an increase in school academics, attendance, um, and raising the graduation rates. Addressing the needs of working parents who cannot pick up the children after school at three, this helps them increase their work productivity by being able to be have a safe place for their children to go. And we help cities reduce juvenile crime, promote healthy lifestyles, and address childhood obesity with our physical fitness academic um, physical fitness component. Our program target population is for children four to twelve years old who are enrolled in the three program sites. Our operation is Monday through Friday from three to six, and on Wednesdays, Wednesdays we open at two. We have five program components, literacy, physical um, activity and fitness, life skills, homework assistance, and we do project-based learning, which includes the science and mathematics. Um, our evaluation methods um, that we use, we have um, three most frequently used is, of course, our attendance, our improve in literacy. 80% of the children will improve their literacy on the oral reading fluency post pre and post assessment. We also have the PACER um, um, assessment and we use the SPARC curriculum. We also have parental satisfaction surveys. We're, we were asking for 20,000 in um, support, for operational support for these three programs and we truly appreciate the, the staff's recommendation at this time. I don't really wanna get into the budget because it's there and you've seen it, but um, there's some photos of the kids and we thank you for your time and if you have any questions, regarding um, the program. Currently, uh, we're asking of the city if we were to get full funding for $270 per kid for the whole 180 days of the cost of $1,961 of what it costs for the full day, for the full um, 180 days. So we're, we were asking for um, $270 per child. Thank you. Did I make my three minutes? I practiced. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> do we have uh, any questions for Ms. Loisel? I do. Thank you. So uh, how specifically do you address literacy? I, I heard you talk about science and math, but how specifically do you go into that? Because I'm very familiar with YMCA. And um, in the past, I haven't quite seen it. Um, and I don't know what changes were made, so maybe you can um, elaborate on the literacy piece and sure. how the science and math piece is being addressed after school. Sure, I can do that for you. The literacy piece is, um, we do the, it's called the Reading um, Enrichment Activities kinder Kindergarten, and we use the, what's called PALS, the Peer Assistance um, Learning Strategies. And participants are divided into pairs and then the students focus on letter sound correspondence. And that is for um, the younger children. And then for the older children, first to sixth grade, um, we use the fluency formula. It's a curriculum that emphasizes um, automatic recognition of words, decoding, um, accuracy, and oral expressiveness. And the students participate in whole groups and small groups. and. Um, and the way that we measure it is we use the ORF and we also use the MAZE assessment. Um, there's two different ones depending upon the child's um, uh, level. level. Mm -hmm. um, and the oral reading fluency is for the lower where they can maybe recognize letters okay, and, and, and things of that nature. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. We have 
um, several children's trust grants where we've been since 2004 measuring literacy um, through the oral reading fluency and we wanted to really focus more on comprehension because just being able to orally recognize words and not being able to comprehend so we added the maze and um, the other the other um, Component. components in order to really focus on comprehension and then as far as the science and math, how is that being addressed? Through the project-based learning component. So what we do is we use, they're called PBLs. And so in the, the children get a whole thing and there's literacy also included in the project-based learning. So if they get a topic and then they say it's about airplanes and they build an airplane and then they have to understand how the wings move or the propellers move and then they when they build it or they have to go research on the computer about the project and so it becomes a whole project-based um, component where they have to read about it then they have to do the math on well if I move the wing here or if I move the propeller there it's going to and and so they're doing math but they're really not knowing that they're doing math or they're doing s science so it's and then they they do presentations of their projects and so then they're getting oral um, uh, you know oral expression they're being able to share their project um, they're doing research on the computer, so they're reading about it, but they're not know they're, I mean, they know they're reading, but they don't know why they're That's reading. Trick them into learning. Right, and so we really try to focus on project-based learning. Um, we've been doing that in the 21st Century Community Learning Center grants, and it's really made a huge shift with the Department of Education to go more into project-based learning than to just, you know, do this, do this, do this. Thank you so Thank much. You, Any other questions? All right, hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll close this part of the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer and staff counsel, there's something I probably should tell you. Somewhere between sometime in 1970 and 1974, lost track of when I worked for the YMCA at North Dade. Uh, started out as a college work study program and wound up working there full time. I, I, I estimate in my feeble memory I was probably four years in total. Uh, no exact start date, no end date comes to mind. It was just one of those things in life. Not a conflict. Not a conflict. Sounds good to me. I worked for 21st Century and Children's Trust. Now? I did. But so you um, no longer do? No. Not a conflict. Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, As of Friday. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. All right. Now, uh, members of the commission, it's 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 our role to address this issue. We have we have really two options. Uh, in, in practicality, we can make a recommendation that alters funding levels, or we can adopt this as presented. And bear in mind that our recommendation sometimes has nothing to do with what the city council will do when it goes to them. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Uh, based on, on the uh, stake, uh, the <coughs> staff evaluations and, and knowing what a difficult process this is and, and it's oftentimes a very emotional process, it, it's also an emotional process with us, recognizing that everyone that made a presentation tonight all your programs uh, are, are wonderful additions to any community. However, I know it's difficult for the staff to have to decide on the amount given to uh, the organizations that have come here, and um, we have to we have to consider. Uh, I know myself. We always, in the past, have had an opportunity to to because of the extra funding that we have is to um, perhaps split up some of the funding to other organizations, but as it, as it is, because of the fact that we're only um, at a, a $80,000 level, and what the staff did, I think, is very uh, very commendable in, in recognizing the best groups uh, out, of the, out of the 12 petitioners. Uh, and, and so I, I want to uh, make a motion that we, um, we accept staff's uh, recommendation of those agencies um, and that um, that made their presentations and, and were uh, allotted 
the amount of, of money as, as stated. I second I the motion. A, I have a question. All right. We, we now know that we've got a motion made and seconded. Now we can discuss it. Yes, go ahead. Okay. For walk in my shoes um, and academics academy, they made very strong presentations. Um, both of their organizations are targeting crucial areas in education um, that really needs to be met in this community. So I would like to know why staff did not award them any dollars towards their organizations. Like what was the driving factor behind them not being awarded any um, funds? I refrain myself altogether when the panel is put together. Um, when I made the presentation for them at the workshop, I told each and every one CBOs, your package has to tell a story in its own. Not because when you come here, you make your presentation, you have to have a compelling story in your package. All your paperwork needs to be in place, everything needs to represent your organization. Apparently, the one that were not funded, as you can see, Irvin was funded last year. They decided not to fund that organization, probably because of the way the package was submitted, documents were missing, the narrative, they probably didn't meet the national objective. Now you have new organization that came in, so it surpasses whomever had before, so therefore they beat them to the punch, and this is why they weren't funded. I did not make any, I did not take any part into selecting them. I allow the panel that we put together to separately evaluate the package, and they came together. As you can see, you can see each and every one of them, although some of them came out at a certain limit, you can see some of them ranked them at a, the way they felt the paperwork was presented, if you look at the ranking in there. So it was not up to staff. Us here is just how the way the panel put together and how the package was submitted to staff, to it the panel. Did they, they did not have an oral presentation? No, we don't, we, because we do not go according to your presentation because your paperwork itself, because we, we have to look at the legality of your paperwork. Uh, are you a 501c3? Have you been audited? What are you using our money for? What exactly are you going to be doing? Um, if certain, certain federal guidelines. Yes, they also have to yes, because we did, gave did them the national those? objective, what you have to meet and what you have to present to us, and because it, I printed the guideline and gave it to staff. So were those two organizations notified mm -hmm. of, of their um, areas of struggle where they lacked, which ultimately um, led to them not being awarded? Um, the guests at the workshop, we tell, we told because all of them that have presented their package right now, apparently they took because we had like probably three weeks or two weeks while the package was online for you to inquire. My cards were there, staff was available. Um, I did not receive any inquiry from anybody. Also, um, I guess this question would be directed to to staff as well. I noticed that. Um, from ICN and Florida Immigrant, um, both organizations have similar uh, services that they offer. And the success rate of From ICN seems greater than Florida Immigrant. However, Florida Immigrant was awarded almost six or seven hundred or so dollars more than. Um, like I said again, um, the package that probably was presented, Florida immigrant probably had a more compelling story versus of the way he presented tonight and just convinced because our staff never met anybody here. Okay. I'm the only one who knows about them and I refrain myself. Paper. Yes. Okay. They all know them by paper. I'm the only one who knows all of them and I refrain from, uh, from voting. So this and, is and a I cautionary tale now, basically. Most, most of those statistics that the guidelines have to be followed were in the packages that we were given. Yes. So there was opportune time. Yes. Because I know I, I breezed through it. I had the same questions you did. And, and that's what compelled me to want to go ahead and, and put my trust in staff, knowing that, you know, they had to make a decision based on which ones followed, followed the procedures to the and I took two weeks from staff and allowed beg supervisors for them to get involved and for me them to give me 
um, the, the, the scoring and for them to be valued the package separately. I gave them the package separately. It's not like we put them to, I put them together. The packages were delivered to them, each and every one of them separately. And they came together and posted each and every one of their score, and we ended up with the average. And at the end, once the average is tallied up together, this is how we determine who ranks number one, two, three, or four, and this is how we divvied out the money. Okay, in that case, I'm in full support of the staff. <laughs> I just needed some clarification. I understand. All you right. know, there, there's a redundancy of all these organizations and there's only so much money, and if we start even diluting that further, it's going to be totally futile for the organization. So They're not going to have any benefit from just keeping knocking down the numbers. And uh, so maybe, you know, maybe some of these organizations should amalgamate and merge. Mm -hmm. I know we brought that up in the past. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So maybe in the future, maybe, um, I'm not sure if you do that now, but maybe there could be some type of a workshop for those candidates that seem to be viable candidates for um, next year's allocations to help them to correct um, whatever uh, they were lacking in their in their packages. The workshop took place on May. Gotta hate that. Um, May third. Wait, when was it? May eleven. Okay. Yes. And for on May eleven, from ten, from eleven to one. Yes, yeah. you're right. I did see the public notice. All right, so they did have a, they gave them an opportunity to yes. come in and, and. With PowerPoints, yeah. and then I sat down and gave them, and I told them specifically, your package has to make sense, okay. because the panel not gonna see you, the package represents your company, your organization. Okay. You will have a chance to convince planning commission and council, but your package itself, based on the federal guideline, it has to make sense. All right, so if we're resolved on that, we have a, a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that concludes all the preliminary matters. We are ready to commence with the LDRs. The Planning Commission will be in recess until 9 o'clock. And thank you so much for what you do. We definitely need those services in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.